Hello and welcome back to The Lamenters. The party has had a most epic journey as they have returned to the town of Lee. Um, and upon arriving at the bridge, uh, where the great number of barricades to prevent the undead from crossing over into the area of the town, um, the party discovered and were told by the guards that um, Lord Lee had passed away. They arrived at the castle and were ushered in and told uh, that they were um, expected and led to the parlor. And once you guys get into the parlor, um, you, you see the door that used to be the door from which um, Lord Trenton Lee would come in. Uh, instead, coming through that door, you see Magister Jones. And you, you see him kind of shuffle in in his... Um, you know, his, his appearance is, is the same. Um, he, he looks a little more, uh, if anything, maybe a little more stressed out. Um, he, he seems a little bit frayed, but he, he comes in and he looks around at you and he says, uh, so I assume that you have been told of the passing of our great Lord Lee was rather unexpected, rather sudden. His family is in mourning, as I'm sure you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Tell um, me, what, what news do you have from the South? Oh, we had found a few places where the undead gathered. We found a way to destroy those schedule holders. And we might might have found oh, a reason what they were for. Mm. Can can I ask? Can I ask you? Uh, what what year do you think it is? Mm, currently, well, it is, and he describes the year accurately. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is an odd question, but um, I suppose nowadays uh, anything could be construed as uh, possibly strange. Um, it, you must tell me what of the losses you 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 surely have more men that you returned with. Uh, oh, soldiers were those were sadly the causalities of undead. Ah, oh, I see. This is they did, they, they thought <laughs> at the beginning that undead were a joke. Then a few of them died. Uh, what of any survivors? Perhaps you, you uh, came across more residents of Oak Point who had been hiding out or some such thing. Uh, they uh, stayed uh, so far at uh, uh, curse farm. No, uh, I I can't remember the name of the farm. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Near near the Oak Point, there hmm. is family which has secured region with survivors from curse. Oak yeah, that's curse. The curse and the rest of the the army went with, with us. Otherwise, there were most mo mostly only orcs, which we dispatched of. And yeah, there. Ah, did, you, you encountered more of those orcs. Yeah, we have reason to believe they will no longer be a problem. Ah, this is most good. Well, I suppose that we, With every conflict, there would be losses, but uh, it sounds as if you have most uh, adeptly managed to handle most of these threats which seem to arise against our, our county and its folk. Uh, tell me, was there any more word of, of the envoy from Southport? Uh, if... Uh... We uh, found um, Di Vincenzo, but he sadly didn't make a journey. Uh, 
Well then. Tell us, what do you know of this Vincenzo? Uh, well, the, the noble family of House Vincenzo has been an affluent and influential part of the, the, the very fabric of uh, Southport and the surrounding region for, for many generations. Their family has been involved in various uh, landowning endeavors, uh, mining, uh, farming, and of course, uh, within the last few decades, probably most notably, the, the shipping industry. Uh, they are one of the prime noble families behind the growth and expansion of Southport as a major industrial port. Um, Yes, they are. Um, were you privy to their, the reasons for them traveling to, to visit Lord Lee, to Lee Castle? I was not. And unfortunately, I have been so busy with the numerous affairs of managing both the, the bureaucracy and also uh, the family's personal affairs in their time of mourning that I have not yet had an opportunity to to even begin to uh, go through Lord Lee's office. I'm sure he has uh, his correspondence with the various noble families. Um, I just simply have not had time to review anything as of yet. Can, uh, can I ask you, and uh, th this is a question to our previous research. Uh, do you remember the war we had questions about? around 100 years ago oh um yes the 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 historical inquiries that you and i were making uh, prior yeah. to your yes yes do, do you know who it was against well uh, we, found... we, we had not quite gotten that far but i know that there was a a matter of conflicts um between uh, the eastern and western kingdoms and uh, the, the free states here in the borderlands, um, some, some of which had chosen sides and some tried to remain neutral. But uh, it was, if I memory serves, it was, a, it was quite a vast war of, of uh, aggression on multiple sides. We have, we have a reason uh, to think that that war is caused uh, is behind the zombies in the area because what we found out uh, somebody in that time tried to use powerful magic and this seem, seems seem to, to be a remnant of it so that's why it's important <clears throat> why are we dancing around the issue we got a dead guy that looks like another guy they're the same guy someone's lying what what is he you see that he seems frightened by this sudden outburst from from credo and and jones like looks over and he's like oh, i what i am not certain of which you speak but I, I i assure you i am not i am not aware of any such things if you if you I wish know. ismo we can go to to my my library, you you are more than welcome to use the resources. I we we have more than enough accumulated data. Uh, can I ask you? Uh, do you uh, how long do you work here? Well, I began my employment uh, for the county when I was a young man. Uh, after um, feeding my studies, uh, I um, I came into I'll, the service of. Uh, Lord Lee's father um, as, as a scribe. And then after his father passed and he um, took control of, of Castle Lee. Um, Do you I, remember and, Lord Lee as a young? Yes, young. of course. I remember him as a boy. There's, there's actually a very finely uh, painted uh, family portrait in the North Hall. If you would like, I can show you. Would you say the similarities between their looks were uncanny? 
Uh, do you do you mean between Lord Lee and his father, whom you served well, at first? Yes, I suppose you could you could say that the uh, Lord Trenton Lee certainly took a a a much more similar appearance uh, and favored his father's appearance to to his mother's side of the family. I, I would say that that is fairly accurate, yes. Um, if you, I, I suppose if you were to compare a, a portrait of Lord Trenton Lee as a older man uh, to a portrait of his father, Lord Trevor Lee at a, a similar time, you would see uh, a resemblance. Yes, certainly the jawline, the eyes, the uh, the striking uh, thick hair and noble bearing of his of his visage. Uh, yes, I would say. Did he have no features of his mother's? Well, I I don't know. Think hard now, friend. If, if you would like, I could take you to the North Hall, the gallery. You can judge for yourself. I, I have known the families for such a long time that it, to me, it, it would just seem that Lord Trenton bore a strong resemblance to his father. Nothing more than any, any other family, perhaps, but uh, you, you come. Well, and he grabs his cane. Uh and he starts making his way towards the hallway doors. One more thing which I would like to discuss here. Uh, this is really a sign thing. I pull out the map with the marked spot. And uh, do you remember where the lo local country took his their currency from? What and he he like comes over to the map and he's like, um, I would have to compare this to some of the older maps and records. Uh, what 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 does this have to do with your inquiry? Well, uh, it's actually this spot we discovered there was an. Uh, ba basically, coin making site under it. It seemed to, to be in uh, possessions of Lee family, but there were no rec records here. So I wanted to ask you that question. I, if this were holdings of uh, the Lee family, I would have to look through the the records. Uh, also, or it could have been land that had been granted by one of the elder uh, leaders of House Lee to to another family, perhaps. I, I do not know off the top oh, of my head. So but... when we were leaving, Lord Lee had absolutely no idea what was in this spot, or at least he claimed it. So, Well, that's quite possible. It, it, it falls within the southern edge of the, the boundaries of the county, but... Yeah, I would say you wouldn't lose a silver mine. A silver mine? Hmm. I don't recall a silver mine being within the grants, the land grants... Unless the land was granted to another family and then the mine was opened there following the grant, that could explain why why the the Lees did not know about such a thing. Yeah. So that is a curious thing. We shall have to look through my library and, and the records. Let's go there. Yes, come. Come to, to, to the gallery. And he he grabs his cane and he you you guys follow him um, down the hallway and you take a turn down another hallway and there's a row of windows that a nice amount of daylight is coming through. And in this rather wide 
hallway. It's it's the kind of hallway where there's like a fancy rug in the middle and there's like seating like wooden benches on one side for where people can sit and small, like really small, almost like cafe tables with chairs. Um, so it looks like, you know, family could could sit there and kind of have like a nice view out the window. And then on the wall opposite of the window wall, you see a series of paintings mounted on the wall. And these paintings are, are one after another of uh, like members of the family of, of the house of Lee. Um, and he, Magister Jones walks up to one of them and he says, see here now, this portrait uh, was, was painted uh, when Lord Trenton was uh, a boy of, I believe, perhaps four or six years old. And he gestures up and you see a family, um, the man, and he points up to the, the father, the patriarch in this, in this painting. And he says, and that is uh, Lord Trevor Lee, Lord Trenton's father. Uh, and that is Madame Muriel Lee, uh, Lord Trenton's mother. Now here you see uh, Lord Trenton when he was a boy of, uh, yes, I believe perhaps six years old, and his uh, sister Marigold Lee, and his youngest brother Quentin Lee, who passed away unfortunately um, only a few years after this painting was commissioned of uh, a fever. Now, uh, there is, I suppose, a strong resemblance, as you could see here, between Lord Trenton and Lord Trevor, but make of it what you shall. And as you guys look, you indeed see that this, this painting, this, you know, 40-something-year-old painting, um, that the, the man who Jones has indicated as being um, Lord Trenton's father, Lord Trevor, does bear a striking resemblance to the Lord Trenton Lee that you guys had met. <clears throat> I got a question. Are there any older paintings on the wall or just a yes. couple? Yes. I want I want to see what Brief like reports. if there's like one older so older here, like Lee's. It, it's the way that the painting in paintings in the gallery have been laid out. It's kind mm -hmm. of like chronologically from left to right mm -hmm. and these are sort of it's funny because like these are kind of like towards the end and as you go back you don't see any other family paintings you see like a painting of the castle you see like a painting of like a man on a horse with a bow and arrow and like a deer but you don't see the face of the man mm -hmm. and then you see like you see like three or four more paintings that precede this family portrait, but all of them are kind of like either places or people that are painted, but without their face, you know, it's like from, from the side or from behind. Yeah. Is, um... Um, there's one portrait of an older woman who is indicated as being um, a, a Lee matriarch that you estimate is from about three generations back. But it's mm -hmm. just it's just her. Her husband mm -hmm. and kids aren't in the the painting. Yeah. Is uh, are uh, are there like signatures of authors of the paintings or not? The artist signatures are. I'm going to say they're not. Okay. They're not on the painting itself. Mm -hmm. Oh. Was there ever a period of a couple of years, perhaps, that you have not seen um, Lord Trenton as the, as a kid growing up, especially towards well, the end? Well, the there was. Of uh, uh, well, when he when he studied at the university, uh, from the ages of sixteen to um, oh, well, twenty. Um, Yes, but just, just during those times. And of course, he did come back for the major holy days um, once or twice per year. But uh, 
for the most part, when he was studying at the university, he he was um, in in his late teens. Mm -hmm. yeah. After he hasn't been away for five six years, only oh, to no. return no, for no, his no. father's de death. Af after his studies at the university, he returned. Uh, he he lived here and began um, learning the the uh, the management of of the family's lands from his father. Um, they made most of their their surveying of the lands and also um, yes, qu quite quite a bit of uh, um, expeditions to together with their men. Um, but but by and large, really, they they stayed here at the castle. Um, they would make short trips around the county. Um, Lord Trevor, you know, was was a bit hesitant to uh, explore the the timber industry, but uh, Lord Trenton, as a young man, was able to <coughs> convince his father of the benefits of this. And uh, that is when the the mill was built uh, in the forest um, to to the east and by the river, and that was um, that was one of uh, Lord Trenton. May the gods watch over his soul. That was one of his finest uh, moments in in convincing his father, and then working towards the construction and establishment of the timber mill. Okay. <clears throat> well, as Credo so eloquently put, uh, the thing is, when we came to the silver mine and we, uh, uh, we, re we recovered Vincenzo uh, from a prison there, and um, later on we uncovered a second Vincenzo, identical, and Identical. Neither, neither what, knew what anything of present day. They thought it was 1522, like a century ago. That so is there is there was something strange, strange going on. And we feel that perhaps the Lee family and maybe others may have similar uh, effects, and which would also explain why uh, Trenton Lee looks very much like his father uh, at the same age. That is, that is most unsettling. Uh, do you, <clears throat> do you believe that the, these, these Vincenzos that you discovered were, were the, the captives of these militant orcs? Uh, they thought so. Could they, uh, could the orcs, be behind all of these machinations? Uh, from what we understood, uh, the orcs, we had uh, a little interrogation with last survivor, and it seemed like uh, their families were kidnapped and they were forced into this region. So even though they were brute muscle behind it, it doesn't seem to be main culprit as you would say yeah well we believe that some of the uh the magic used to win the war led to somehow resulting in these similar uh people and that somehow perhaps the succession of family is part of that uh, same magic of um, reconstituting a similar body and continuing in that in that new body and uh, doing away with the old uh, as part perhaps of still maintaining some control over however they won the war and we're still trying to figure that out I must admit that this this is quite disturbing, and it 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 does 
instill in me a, a wish that the priest Collins had survived. He was much older than me and had uh, quite a encyclopedic knowledge of, of both the history and the folklore of the region. He most assuredly would have had many more insights into these strange occurrences of which you speak. What happened to Priest Collins? Well, I thought you said that he had died with oh the, the one in Oak Point. The, the zombies, yes. yes Does Oak his Point. family still live in the area? No, sadly, Collins outlived his children. He was a he was a widower, and I believe the last of his sons passed away perhaps eight or ten years ago. Does his family have land in the area? I I am not certain. I would have to consult the land records uh, of the county, the county records, but I, I'm certain that perhaps an older generation of the Collinses may have had land. And did Lord Lee uh, keep a journal? Uh, we recovered a journal from the Vincenzo twins, if you will. Uh, it has some uh, interesting insights that we need to delve in deeper. Uh, but perhaps uh, Lord Lee or his uh, forefathers uh, may have had a journal as well that might shed light on uh, the, the goings on of winning that war uh, a century ago. Well, I am certain that Lord Lee kept many records. I am not sure where they would be. If they would be in his personal chambers, then it would be incumbent upon us to beg the permission and favor of Lady Lee to explore these things. However, at this time, as she and the family are in mourning, it may be best to, to patiently wait. I see no reason to, to hurry about this matter, since it seems as if you have all resolved the issues pertaining to the orcs and these zombies. Not completely, but doesn't seem to be. That's why we ask. And can I ask you another question? How, how's Magister Mayer doing right now since we left? Oh, Mayer is, I, as far as I know, he is doing well. He's been staying at the inn. Um, okay. Mr. Sloan has, has seen to it that any refugees and survivors from anywhere in the county have had a place to stay. It's, it's a little, little bit tight here in the castle. We have people sleeping in, in some of the stables uh, and everyone is trying to work together to accommodate anyone who survived and made it through. Um, can I ask you uh, about uh, who is captain of the castle guard. We may wish to speak to him. Well, yes, we, we have had two captains. Uh, at first, uh, Captain Martins has uh, taken on the patrol and the management of the uh, the bridge crossing. And as you, you well know, uh, this is probably the most important task as this is the place where the majority of zombies have tried to breach our defenses. Um, but uh, we, we did promote a uh, second captain. Um, his name is Carlson. And he has been managing the patrols of soldiers on horseback, manning the roads to the north and the fields to the east and west. Okay. Well, we do have any other questions, guys? 
Well, in that case, we have some business at the local church. Were there any news from there or still buried up? And He seems confused. He's like, the local church? Uh, yeah, that, that ruin. Oh, yes. Well, n- not that I know of, but uh, Captain Carlson has been making patrols. He may know about the hamlets and, and other farms to the east and north and west. I do have one more thing. And not sound crude in this uh, really terrible time, but we were to be paid for our services. Of course, yes. I, I will, um, if you will allow me to, to get those affairs in order, uh, I, will, I will also... Uh, have a document um, indicating what your your parameters were and and the payment having been received that you may sign it as well for the county records, of course. Of course, yes, of course. Yes. Why don't we, gentlemen? Uh, perhaps we we reconvene here um, tomorrow uh, at noon, say, for lunch. And uh, we will settle all of our affairs at, at that point. Very well. Agreed. Okay. So he he escorts you guys back to kind of the main hallway, um, and he he you know you see one of the guards kind of open up the door as you guys are approaching, and. Um, he continues on and he, he turns off and goes into his office. Mm-hmm. So you guys get out, you're, you're in the inner courtyard. Um, you see, you see some like random, like residents who are kind of like sweeping up and kind of cleaning up, up around the yard. And, and um, you also see like, uh, the blacksmith and his assistant and, you know, a few of the soldiers kind of like doing random tasks, like, you know, organizing arrows and, and um, taking care of the horses. And you see, you know, a few of the soldiers kind of like sharpening blades, that kind of stuff. I, oh, oh, oh. Uh, to the blacksmith and then walk to the outer outer circle like if i uh, if okay. i like where uh, to the same part where in and churches like uh, to the castle that's beyond the gate or the- you want to head to the to the church yeah okay so if I you guys are going to the church all right, so you you at this point you have returned your horses though. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're you're walking to the church and it's I'm going to say it's, you know, still light out. There's yeah. And you know, looking for guard patrols around if any. So you us. you walk up the road to the north for quite a ways. And you see, you know, you you see uh of you know, maybe 100 meters up ahead. The, the small hovels and, and houses and huts and cottages that you're familiar with. And you see the ruins of the church up on to the left. Um, you, you don't see any guard patrols. You don't see any soldiers on horseback, anything like that. What time of day is it? I forget. Um, I'm gonna, I don't remember exactly when you guys got in. But uh, I'll say that it's middle afternoon. So let's say it's like 3 p.m. Okay. Well, so you see the church up ahead. Uh, it doesn't look like yeah. it's been disturbed. Um, you don't see anybody outside of their houses. All the little cottages have their doors closed and their wooden shutters closed. Oh, well, good, Freya. I know the only priest in the town will be there so do we want to go there or do we want to want to speak with Meyer first we also need to get things for tonight I believe 
the basin, water, salt. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get some provisions first, yeah. I mean, so you so you didn't walk up to the church? Well, I think we're having this conversation by the church. Yeah, right. Yeah. We're standing yeah, you outside. Are. And yeah. So yeah. you see you see the hovels, the the little cottages, um, the town well, and then you see the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, should we well, see oh. if we can if we can find Igar and if he thinks he can help out first? Okay. Yep. That's your friend. Oh. Yeah. Back and friend. Is it blocked or is it open? It is as you left it. So. Yeah. So, let's walk in. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So. Elena and Credo, you you guys are following them into this church. Mm -hmm. um, you go down uh, these. The, there's there's stairs actually that split. Some go up to the main level of the church, and then there's stairs that go down. Um, Gizmo leads you down, and Freya and Brolgood are kind of at the ready. Uh, there's a, a sturdy door that they open up. And it opens up into what looks like a storage room and they walk to the end of the storage room and you see that there's like this wooden shelf and they kind of slide the wooden shelf aside and it opens up into this cave like um, bedrock kind of like dirt, you know, cave like area. They go through and and it's very earthy smelling kind of damp and they, they lead you down to this this tunnel that goes kind of down and further underground um, and it splits off uh, you guys get to the fork and you split off in the direction of um, where the altar is yeah. I'm keeping eye on where the uh, crescent barrier used, used yeah, to be you, you see it, you pass it yeah uh, you go down the split and you get okay. to the altar chamber um, and you see Igar is laying on the table and he does not look well. He looks very gaunt, um, like starved. And he's, he, you don't know if he's dead or like sleeping because you don't see his chest moving. And he's he looks like he's got his like arms up around him. Hey there, still on that? He looks Are you dead. At you. Are you dead, dead? Oh, I feared he had left this mortal coil. Again? <laughs> Again. He says, oh, What is it? What do oh. you need? We need to destroy some very powerful magical it items by blessing them and you seem to be most capable person in uh, you don't know the pain that i am in what's happening to you he Wrong. you don't see anything happening to him but you mm -hmm. as you guys look around the room you see like the the rations that you left him you see them just kind of scattered. You see a few piles of vomit that look like they dried up days ago. Mm -hmm. He's like, I, I starve. I can't eat anything. Nothing stays in my stomach. If I try to eat, I throw it all up. But I'm starving. What would an undead require for food? I don't know. Oh, what do you think, Kratos? flesh what are they what have they all wanted i don't desire flesh i'm just saying that i can't eat food i cut my hand and hold it in front of him <laughs> you i was gonna he looks he looks at it and he's like i have no desire for that none all right Bro. what's there? i bring it to my Wrap bag and i have his uh his medallion or his amulet or whatever he had back when he's a priest 
and I show that to him and I say, Igar, could this help you? Oh, he reaches out and his hands are shaking. And, and you notice, I mean, he, he has like no color in his skin left anymore. And he, he takes the, the holy symbol and he holds it and he clutches it to his chest and he starts praying. Uh, what is it that you need me to do? Uh, one, yes. one dose and I pull, uh, pull out uh, at first one of the one of the chalices and say we have all of them and we need to submerge them in salt water and have someone to bless them. We need someone to sanctify the water, the, the salt water, um, <clears throat> in order to destroy these holders. One last but, mission for you. Is there a, a baptismal font in the church upstairs? Well, I'll, I'll go yeah. look. Yeah, I'll go look. Okay. Credo, come on. I don't want I don't want to be caught unawares. I'm with you, Elena. So the two of you go back through the tunnel, you go back to the stairs and you go up. And when you get up to the main floor of the church, it's a eerie sight. It's it's not a fancy church um like some of the larger temples that you guys have seen in in the south. It's it's much more like pastoral and much more rural. It's very yeah. simplistic. There are mm-hmm. wooden pews that look very <clears throat> uncomfortable. And, you know, there's, there's a very simple um, wooden altar with like what looks like a nice cloth over it and a couple candelabras, but it's everything's covered in dust and like spider webs as it has sat up here abandoned. Um, and parts of the roof that have, you know, fallen apart there there's leaks and it's obvious that there's been like water damage but you do see a wooden table that has a large ceramic um, bowl on it that Mm -hmm. you feel is probably there's no water in it anymore but it probably could function in the way that igar had described this place smells like death shall we take that and go yes let me look is there any salt around Check on the off chance. No, there are candles. Okay. There's, you know, cloths. There's different holy symbols. There's no no salt. All right. Is this the basin big enough for just one person to take it, or do we need to two person um, job with this? One person who's really strong could take it. Well, if one of us takes it, then maybe one of the the other person can go get some salt, and then the other people need to get start getting water. What do you think, Kratos? You think you can handle it? I can handle it. All right. Tell the others I'm going to go get salt, and then they need to start getting water for that basin. Will do. Okay. Meanwhile, yeah. back with um, Igar, the rest of you, you, you see Igar, despite having some comfort of having his holy symbol back, and he's kind of silently whispering prayers, you, you could just see that he is in physical agony. <clears throat> and, and he keeps like, every once in a while, he'll like clench up in, in pain and like a spasm of pain. Did your God speak to you anymore? Or... I have prayed. I have prayed every moment that you've been gone. I have prayed that my God would just end my misery and take me away but I don't die despite starving despite the pain and suffering despite my muscles aching and burning there is no reprieve from this it is truly hell I'm sorry to hear that my friend Uh, you have no clue how we might help alleviate some of the pain Some water to rinse your mouth, perhaps? Wash your face? Perhaps. So, about this time, um, 
Kratos returns with this large ceramic bowl um, and, mm. and sets it down. Uh, you know that there's a town well if you wanted to go out and fill buckets of water. Um, and that Elena said she was going to get salt. I can go get the water. Okay. I so, start preparing the chalices, space them one by one on, on the floor. Okay. In the line, not in the circle. Um, I want to keep the one in the in the case, still in the case. Yeah. Okay. So after a little while, um, I, I'm going to say Elena that you you basically had to like run back to town and go to the general store and buy like a, a block of salt. Yeah. Um, and you get back, and by this time, Roll Goods already brought all the water, so you guys kind of have everything set up. Um, and when Elena comes back with this block of salt, you have the, the water in the, the font. Um, Igar, you know, Igar basically is, has set up and he's looking at this and he says, what is it that you need me to do? Oh, uh, for just to be sure, I opened the journal and. If I remember, uh, Vincenzo told us to move, submerge them at once and then bless the water. And I try to con con confirm this with the journal. Okay. Um, you take a few moments to review the journal. And while you're doing that, Igar, Igar says, is it, is it a prayer? Is it a ritual? If so, I must see it. Rituals will fail unless they are performed exactly as intended. Okay. Any information in the book? I mean, you you have you have the book. Do you share it with with Igar? Yeah, to... definitely. He's he's like, he reads it and he's he says, I think I understand. Each one of you will need to submerge the candle holders at the right time during my prayers. I will indicate this to you. He says, as there are there are nine candle holders, each one of you should have two of them. And I will have the last one. Uh, he says, help lift me off of this table so I can be closer to the baptismal font. When you, when you lift him, first of all, he's surprisingly lighter. Um, and basically, you, you, it's like you feel like just skin over bones. Like you feel like he is atrophied. And, and you you lift him and set him down and you literally hear like when people like crack their knuckles, like all of his joints make like cracking sounds. And, and he's, and he's like, ah, 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 ah. And, and he, he holds his holy symbol over the, the font and he begins praying to, to his God and he's whispering the prayers and, and he says, begin he says, Freya, place your candle holders into the salt water. And he begins doing blessings over them. And then he looks to Gizmo and he says, Gizmo. And then he continues and he says, roll good. And then he says, Credo. And he, he continues the prayers and he says, Elena. And then he continues the prayers and he sets the last candle holder into the font. And, and then he holds up his holy symbol and begins making a circle over the entire thing and blessing the water. And as he's doing this, the, the water begins to bubble like it's boiling. 
And instead of steam coming off of it, like it would from heat, there's like a light fog that begins to float over it. And it gets so thick as this light fog is bubbling and foaming over the water that you can't even see the candle holders, but you hear the bubbling sound. And after a few moments in his continued prayers, you see that the candle holders, the, the fog over the water and the bubbling is simmered down. And, and all you see is like basically under the, the holy water is this congealed um, like blob. It looks like basically like the, almost like the, the candle holders had somehow melted and now are in this kind of viscous blob form that's at the bottom of the font. Mm -hmm. And he, he kind of leans back and he's like, it is done. And he holds the holy symbol to his chest. Oh. He says, you must end my suffering. Please kill me. Kill me as you did the one who was here before. I go up and support him and quietly slip out my dagger and stab him in the chest. I'm sorry, my friend. He, I hope he shudders in pain. And then a few moments later, you see he stops spasming and this time his body falls limp. Now that he's passed, <clears throat> just for security, I uh, solemnly r run my dagger through his ear into his brain. Okay. As a precautionary measure. He seems to be finally passed. And as, as, you, as he doesn't bleed, because his wounds weren't bleeding, it, it, basically he looks not all that different from how he looked a few moments ago. Um, but his still clenched in his hands and to his chest is his holy symbol. And there is no more, no more pain in his facial expression. You guys are, you know, it's been it, it, this whole process of, you know, running back to town, getting the salt, gathering the water, all that stuff. And then the, the, studying of the ceremony and the ritual and then the performance of it took a few hours. So I'm going to say that it is, it's nearing dusk. Um, you are, you are still in the, you know, the, the altar room um, and the baptismal font has this blob on the bottom of it that you can visibly see. So what do you guys do? Uh, I want to poke it with the arrow just to see what it, <laughs> what the fuck's up with this stuff so you you poke your arrow down towards it mm -hmm. and when the metal tip of your arrow gets near it it moves away oh that's, <laughs> almost that's almost freaky. like that's like weird. when you take two magnets and the magnet yeah. pushes the other one away it kind of yeah. moves away that's mm -hmm. weird is that supposed to happen gizmo like point out as I like try to prod it and it keeps moving away I assume I list through the book is there any like this description of the result of the ritual nope uh, shit. well it's not far from what's supposed to happen it's no longer usable as candle holder but what the hell it is I have no idea <sighs> yeah it it will move away from your arrow anytime you try to touch it with your arrow. It doesn't move otherwise. Like if you pull your arrow out, it just yeah. floats to the bottom again. Uh, I wonder what happened right, if I touched it with my hand. Oh, Elena, I would not <laughs> put your hand in there. The other end of your, the other end of your arrow, the, the non-metal part. The, the fletched side? Yeah. I'm trying to... Okay. Try and touch it with the other end. You, you touch into it, and it's kind of like touching into the goop, and it just sort of like bloop. And then when you pull it out, it kind of <laughs> sticks to it for a second, and then it falls back into the water. 
Huh. Is that is there? I'm frantically searching in the book and looking from for like uh, the original ritual, not for distraction, but for usage. If there is anything about origin of those, there is not. Okay. Anything in your book about that kind of material, Gizmo? Not to my knowledge. I really have just few basics. Basics to the to this ritual and this is more advanced than I'm capable but uh, it almost seems alive what if we take it, it out of the water I wouldn't do that because <laughs> so I'm so close to pressing that red button right do, now do we do you have anything close to the lit to the what? Oh, my sword. Right? Lid. What? Like to cover oh, it. Lid. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, I mean, you you could you do have one of the wooden buckets that you guys used from the well. Yeah. So if you I mean the bucket can't hold the same volume as the baptismal font, but it definitely could hold the the, the, the slime, the goop mm. with with some water. <laughs> I mean, not all of the water, but with some of it. Yeah. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> you and me both, Kratos. Oh. So what are you going to do? We can't just leave this goop We can't here. just leave it. We don't we know what it, it will do. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of doubt that it will be any way, shape, or form harmful in this shape compared to the, the candlestick form they it was in before and eventually unless we put in a, a eternal blessed water uh, it will dry out sometime and who knows what happens when it's dry but i don't think it will be nefarious when it's dried and solidified I just, perhaps i just want to know where we put this and leave it forever and no one finds it <laughs> i like the way you think that's why we're friends. <laughs> oh, I was having a similar idea, but he can't bury it. I have no idea if we can boil boil it out. Or I don't know. What I'm very curious about is if destroying these candle holders has done anything to the undead situation that has been plaguing us in the land. Mm -hmm. Mm. It might have. I'm still interested in guard captain because he seemed like a person with a sword. So. I am too. I'm also interested in getting paid tomorrow and not dying and probably getting the hell out of here. And we yeah. bury this thing in the earth until we can decide what to do with it. Well, I wouldn't like it to soak into the earth. Put it in a sealed container. Uh, container there, and all. There, there was sarcophag, or what? What was lich on? What? It's table. just table, or is it sarcophag? I'm not sure. What is it currently on, or what was it on upstairs? <coughs> uh, no, uh, uh, I meant a uh, table downstairs, which uh, um, I got the, a light. Igor was using as a bed. Yeah, yeah, that was the it's... sarcophagus. Yeah. We might want to put it in there. We might at least try to put it in there. Mm hmm. So you're just going to pour it out into the sarcophagus? Why don't no, we get a sealed off. container of some sort? And I like not a huge sarcophagus, something small we can put it in because the volume of the goop fits in the bucket, seal it, and then bury it somewhere. And then we all don't talk about this ever again. <laughs> Would it fit in my water flask? Is that too big? Uh, 
The water flask might be too small. It, no, it would know. fit in a large water skin or wine skin, but you'd have to have a funnel yeah. to right. pour it into it. Yeah. Large wine bottle, maybe. It would fit in a wine cask. Then we weren't the wine barrels in the other room. Yeah, was there any like sacramental wine or anything you can upstairs? Grab an empty wooden cask if you wanted. Yeah, uh, I'll go run and get one. Okay. Yeah, we can put Pull it the lid off. <clears throat> it's slightly more volume than the bucket, but yeah. it's sealed. Yeah, so, let's 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 put the the rest of the blessed water in there just for good measure. Okay. As much as we can. Um so who's who's pouring this in? I'm holding the bucket the, the cast. Okay, so you're gonna help each other. All right. So if 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 like Kratos lifting it up and then and and pouring it in and Elena's kind of you, the rest of you guys are studying it. You you pour the water, you see the goop kind of like not swimming, but like <laughs> <laughs> kind of going away from the pour, but then like gravity just goes whoop, whoop and it goes and it, it plops in. Nasty little so bugger. It's about half of the water that was in the, the font plus the goop. But now you have it in this in this cask and and you you can seal it. I seal the lid. Okay. You do. Let's I have no idea how to bless a thing, but I, I will try to wet it, wet the barrel from all sides with the remaining water in the in okay. the in the bowl. Okay. So, are we? Where do we put it? Where do you put it? That's the big question. That's a great question. Where should we? I mean, we could be poetic about it and bury it in the cemetery. I don't know. Well, I wouldn't put it in the sarcophagus that we that we have in front of us. No. But I I don't think that will be a smart move. Um, I'm not sure about leaving Igor here up in the open, but I definitely don't want to put him in the sarcophagus either. Yeah, we should, should be buried. We should bury yeah. him. Oh. There, are there, all the there is a cemetery right behind the church, so yeah, I was about to. I was just about to say that he should be buried where he, where a holy man should in the church's cemetery. Do we know where he was from? No, you you guys would know better than me or Credo. No. Oh. I think we should bury him here. Yeah, he was he I'm was sure. definitely a Northman, but you don't know where from. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a. Yeah. See if we can find some uh, shovels and. Okay. Yeah, you you do. Room. All right, you dig out a grave. You. You dig until it goes dark, and now it's let's say seven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Um, Gizmo, could you do a final blessing as we put Igar to, to his final resting place along with this uh, goop? Wait, uh, are you bearing the goop with Igar? I just need to understand this. <laughs> what? I would think so. No. no. I think that's not a. I, I suggest I we don't do that. Idea. I don't think we should bury this goop in this country, <laughs> let, let alone in this city. If, I'm just going to yeah. say this. This is a bit meta right now. <laughs> but if you did that, the entire season two of this show would be very different. <laughs> <laughs> How about we take the goop? I'm more way, way far away from here. You know, we're gonna get paid tomorrow, and it then needs we can to be leave. Contained with magic. If if anyone can conjure up something to contain it, I don't. I don't trust oh. it just being in a container. Someone I, will I, stumble upon this, and then I, I think our best bet is to get it to the proper church, which means 
leave this country because there is no other church. I wonder. You remember Maybe. when you conjured that dark emptiness? Could we send it there? Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't be sure it wouldn't come back. It's a really chaotic place. I don't understand. It'd certainly, be, it certainly wouldn't be here on this plane of existence, at least. If mm-hmm. it were to be eaten like, it, like the whole barn was. Besides, I'm not sure that if I would be to send it there, the only way I can, I wouldn't summon whatever it was supposed to summon. Okay. So that's... Even though this stuff seems awesome, but it most probably wouldn't be under my control. That's my stuff. Sure, sure could be fun though. Mm-hmm. Oh. So <sighs> with that, you guys um you bury Igar, you say a few words. It's nighttime. Um I assume that somebody has a torch lit. Mm-hmm. I do. And who is carrying the cask? Elena. Okay. All right. So you guys head back to uh, to town? Yeah, back to Arthur and uh, Rusty Crow. Okay. You guys get back. It is... Uh, it's a strange sight. You see a lot of people. And, like, you hear people drinking and laughing and talking in the inn. You see people on the street. And as you guys come down the street... One of the guards that you, you, not anybody in particular, but like just one of the guards that you guys recognize from the, the bridge group comes over and, and is like, have you heard the good news that the zombies are dead? I mean, well, really doing, dead. Right? Well, They're all dead. They just fell. It was well, amazing. Then one thing has gone our way. <laughs> it, it was as if suddenly... They, they all they all just dropped and the ones that were spiked at our barricades just stopped twitching it was it was the most miraculous thing there there's celebration well i'll have a drink of that yes come come <laughs> come to the inn and you guys you guys uh like are approaching the inn and you see a bunch of just it's like there's this great sense of relief in the townsfolk and people are kind of celebrating um and you hear music and singing. And actually, as you're coming up onto the, the porch, you see uh, Farrick. And he's kind of standing up on a table. He's playing his lute and he's, he's singing a song. And, you know, people are kind of dancing around and cheering and having drinks. And um, you, you see just like, and then it, across the room, you see Magistrate Maiar. And he's, he's kind of sitting with a, a few of the townsfolk and, laughing and talking and there's a very uh celebratory kind of scene going on i fear we can't rest long there's more work to be done but we should enjoy this night <sighs> yep we've earned yep. one night mm-hmm Oh, we still have the appointment in the uh, in the afternoon as a- anyway. So, yep. So that night, you guys are like heroes, right? Like everything, all of your food and all of your drinks are purchased by everyone else. Like Magistrate Maiar and and like like the you know the inn. Ev- everybody like everybody in town chips in like. There's, you know, the, the, the dancing, the drinking, the celebration, um, like Farrick sings a song that describes your, your heroics, even though like half of the things that he makes up in the song are factually not true, but he, <laughs> he like explains yes. how like you rode, you rode South with your lances and your armor and you defeated hordes of zombies, like, and, and the people cheer this story about you and, 
and like at, by like two in the morning finally like it's kind of died down and you, you guys go up to the room that was reserved for you and just crash um the, the next morning you sleep in a little bit um you, you it feels good having slept in a bed um you guys you know you get up you hear people downstairs and you know you have some breakfast they're they're they they take care of everything um and you you see that like town is kind of getting back to normal there isn't like the market's not like kicking but there you see people like kind of like setting up stalls again and and kind of getting back to normal you know um the 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 windows are open instead of being like closed and shuttered it's like there's a little more life going on in the town again. And um, you wash up and, you know, you, you kind of get yourselves together and uh, it's nearing noon um, for the time of your appointment. What, what are you guys bringing with you, if anything, that is out of the ordinary and what are you doing with the cask? <laughs> Mm. Um, I'm not bringing anything out of the ordinary. Um, I still have the the Lee ring with me. Yeah, if um, if if anything, I'm I'm basically a little bit low on my load because there are not four chalices in my pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I think the cask. Can we leave that in a room? What do you think, guys? Can we leave it there? I might might be a good idea to take it with us oh. because I was gonna say might drink it. I was gonna say I I'll stay here. Kratos can collect my pay. I don't want anyone messing with it. <coughs> I don't want to take it to the castle. No, I'll I'll wait for you. Okay. So we'll just say you were having a hangover from last night's party and stayed in. I mean, you're not wrong. I do have a hangover. Yes. <laughs> you and me, too. All right. We'll head to the castle then. Okay. So, Elena, you you just kind of recuperate. You you keep an eye on the cask. The rest of you guys go up to the castle. Uh, you see people... You see people who were obviously um, like refugees. You see them... <laughs> them kind of like packing up stuff. You see some of the guards helping people load things into wagons. You see um, it just it just looks like things are getting back to normal. And um, and and one of the, the guards sees you guys and, and beckons you over and uh, opens up the main castle uh, gates and uh, and 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 says uh, come on in guys um uh, uh Magister Jones is is uh, waiting for you uh, in the dining room, and he leads you down the hall. He opens up the door to the dining room, and you see the dining room table is set. Um, at the head of the table, you see where you know Lord Lee would be sitting. There is just a uh, like a candle on a crystal candle holder, and then you see um, Jones seated at where he would normally be sitting, and he. He stands and he says, Ah, welcome, my friends. I, I trust from the festivities of last night that you heard of the great news about the dead falling. That was yeah, one of the greatest things. Meyer informed us. Yes, yes. I was very pleased to have been informed uh, when, upon returning from his patrols to the east, um, uh, uh, Captain uh, Carlson had mentioned that uh, he saw fields of the undead uh, just fall. So it is, it will be some time to to clean up the bodies and perform proper burials and and for life to once again return to normal. But what? you have our gratitude. Please come come sit and and dine with me. So you guys sit down. Um. And he's, he looks at you and, and, you know, you guys are, there's servants who come and bring in like fresh food and 
there's like an entire, you know, roasted turkey and vegetables. You guys have this elaborate meal, like the best meal that you've had in ages. Um, and then after the meal, uh, he, he rises and he invites you to his office. Um, you guys go to his office and you see that on his desk, um, you see several small chests and he, he picks up each of the small chests. And these are like nice quality chests, actually, like, like decorative jewelry boxes almost. And he hands one to each one of you guys. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, it weighs, it weighs. Um, and you open it and in each one, it's stacked with gold coins. And these are minted with, with the um, Lee County mint. Um, and uh, Magister Jones says, I also have crafted uh, letters of introduction. These are um, signed by uh, Lady Lee. And he, he shows you, he opens up one of these scrolls and he says, uh, there is a duplicate, one for each of you. And uh, of course, I assume you have no problem taking one to your friend Elena as well. But mm-hmm. these are signed by Lady Lee. And as a matter of introduction, should you choose to travel, these are essentially vouchers of your good character. And I have co-signed as well as the steward of Castle Lee. He, he hands each one of you one of these scrolls as well. Thank you, sir. He says, Thank you. my friends, we have no way of deciphering the mysteries of the world that are unknown to us. Some things are perhaps only understood by the gods and the ancients, but whatever befell this region, it is to you and your friends and your friends who have fallen as well that we owe our lives. So you have my gratitude as well for your services to the county of Lee. And I have two requests. In the zombie heart, there still should be bodies of our two previous companion with companions. You would know how they looked. Would you be able to receive those bodies for proper burial? Well, I suppose it, depending on where they are, uh, the 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 people. And, and soldiers will be gathering the bodies that fell that are closest to the town first and then working their way outward. So it, it may be some time before we are able to arrive at Oak Point and uh, properly begin to clean up. But Understood. it is my hope and the hope of Lady Lee also that, that we will be able to restore Oak Point and, and repopulate it. Uh, We have some incentives in mind to try to draw perhaps some people from nearby regions to come and help settle it. And let it be known that should any of you decide to stay in the county, we are no doubt uh, eager to have you uh, here. And certainly the, the village of Oak Point will need some, some restoration work, uh, some, some carpentry to restore the buildings and, and some, some good folk to begin to repopulate it. Well, we'll think about it. I, I would do say... Feel, that... Do you feel we have to do some other things for our friends first? Of course, yes, of course. Oh. 
did anyone else other than zombies dropped dead yesterday? Uh, not that I know of. <sighs> That's good news, I would say. Yes. Yes. Yes, it seems as if this horrific, nightmarish uh, event is at last over. Uh, could you maybe, it It seems like banality, but could you make uh, a notice to the king's church to make, to rebuild local church? Because we... Yes, we, we are actually... Um, Lady Lee was was quite uh, pious. Uh, she's quite pious and devout, and she uh, is is actually crafting a missive um, to the bishop uh, to send uh, clergy that we will we will have tax incentives and um, we will tithe a certain portion of provisions to ensure the welfare of the church. But that will will also be something that we seek to do as well. Yes. Okay. Well, gentlemen, I have quite a, a task ahead of me, but I, yes. I wish you all the very best. And again, you have our gratitude for your services to the County of Lee. You're welcome. Well, also. Um, so he, he stands and, and kind of shuffles over to the door and, and he shakes hands with each one of you as you guys depart. Um, you return to the inn, uh, Elena, you are given one of these, these boxes, um, and one of these scrolls that you guys have now, um, these, these marks of introduction. So. As How you much guys, did you get paid, Kratos? Don't uh, ask me. I can't count. You, when you open up your box, you see that it is not silver coins, but that these are gold coins minted uh, with Castle Lee's mark. Um, and as you guys uh, kind of feel the settling in of um, what has finally happened and what has all transpired. You consider what your what your options are for the future, and um, you hear the sound of singing from below, as Farrakh apparently has woken up, and you hear some people talking and laughing, and you think to yourself, maybe maybe we'll go have a after lunch drink, and you you head down to the the main part of the public house, and uh, and you see a lot of friendly faces and people who are very happy to see you there. And that is where this season of the Lamenters has come to an end. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe, click on that notifications bell and keep your eyes and ears open because we'll be back after a hiatus for season two of the Lamenters. Thank you as always for watching and supporting us. We'll see you around. Peace out. It's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things.